Welcome back, and today I'd like to talk about Google Drive File Stream and Google Backup and Sync. So these are going to be the new uh, alternatives or kind of replacement apps for the Google Drive app once that's phased out sometime around in December and then officially discontinued and obsolete uh, right around March of 2018. So let's go right into these and kind of look at what they have in common and what their differences are and kind of decide which one is better best for you. Alrighty, so uh, I'm going to do a quick Google search. Uh, let's see, Google Drive. And I believe it's going to be this one here. Okay, so the Google Drive download page actually brings you to this page here. And you have the personal version here, which is called Backup and Sync. And then the uh, version that's tailored to businesses, Drive File Stream. Uh, so I already have both of these downloaded. I'm going to go into my downloads folder, but you can go ahead and download uh, them with me and kind of see which one works best for you. Alrighty. And let's go in for the backup and sync version first, the uh, personal version. All right, installation is complete. All right, let's get started. And we're gonna sign in with my personal account. Oops, if I could remember my password. Perfect. And let's send a text message. Two-step verification, hands down, the best way to protect your account. Uh, okay. Four, five, seven, eight, four, five. Okay, gotta have some soda pop. Okay, got it. All right, so first, uh, right off the bat, we have some options here. Uh, this option up top here is we can actually have folders that continually back up to Google Drive. So by default, it selects your desktop documents and your pictures folder for you. Uh, so essentially what this means, anything that you place on your desktop is automatically going to get uploaded to your Google Drive. And then you can access that from a web browser, from your phone, uh, from a, a tablet, from anywhere. Uh, I don't need this. I don't want anything backing up to the cloud. I prefer to drag and drop things directly into the web browser or into my Google Drive folder. Uh, so what I'm going to do is deselect all of these options. Next, we have our uh, sort of Google Photos option here. Uh, this will actually let you upload photos directly to uh, your Google Photos from any folder that you select. And they give you the option between an original quality upload or a high quality upload. Now, to the naked eye, uh, in my experience, it's kind of hard to tell uh, whether, you know, the, the differentiate the high quality versus the original quality. So I always choose high quality, mainly because it's free and unlimited. So you have an unlimited amount of storage for your photos. You don't have to worry about running out of storage space and it doesn't count towards your quota. Now, if you're a photographer or someone who needs high quality resolution photos stored in the cloud, then by all means, choose the uh, original quality photo here. And then the option to upload photos and videos to Google Photos. So you can check your photo settings to see which items from Google Drive are shown in Google Photos. Uh, I actually prefer not to select any of this because I take all my pictures from Google Photos from my phone. So my phone automatically uploads. Uh, I have an iPhone and I have the Google Photos app on it where any photos that I take in my camera roll automatically got uploaded to Google Photos for me. Uh, so that's my primary reason for having Google Photos because I don't want to take up storage on my iPhone. Okay, then uh, if I have any other photos from my computer that I want to upload, I can just go to google.com and you know log in with my Gmail account, go to photos and drag and drop the pictures in there if ever necessary, which I don't find the need to do that so often. All right, so all of these settings look good. Let's go ahead and click next. Got it. Okay, so from here, it's going to say, do I want to sync files from my Google Drive to my Mac or my PC? So essentially, if I have uh, uh, multiple files in Google Drive, I need to have internet to access them. 
This allows me to not have an internet connection. So if I lose internet or if I'm in a dead zone or something or you know in the woods or camping or whatever, I can choose to have certain folders and files or all of my folders and files synced to my computer so that I can have access to my Word documents, my um, PDFs, images, and you know audio, video files, whatever, whatever you have stored in there. So I'm gonna do a selective sync uh, for only one of my folders because I know that this BizCards folder I use regularly, and I'm gonna have I want to have access to it in case I don't have internet. And let's hit start. And continue all right continue all right so this is essentially letting me know all right my Google Drive folder here is being synced and you're gonna get green check marks on all the files that have uh, completed uh, syncing so that kind of wraps it up for the Google Drive um, the Google backup and sync portion of this all right now let's go for the business version or like the prosumer or the G Suite version and see what the differences are there. Uh, yes, okay. All right. And let's install. I'm going to use my business account. And once again, we have two-step verification. I cannot stress how important it is to have this enabled. All right, and this is just giving us kind of like a heads up of what's gonna happen. All right. Stream Google Drive files right to your computer. Save disk space by only downloading the files you need. Mark items available offline to edit without a connection. All right, Open Explorer. So here's the major difference uh, right off the bat that you can see uh, between Google Drive File Stream and Google Backup and Sync. When you open up uh, this PC, or when, even when, on, when you're on a Mac, you'll notice all of a sudden you have this new hard drive there. So it literally mounts like, like an internal hard drive where you can see it on your uh, device list. Uh, so if you open it up, uh, well, before you even open it up, you can tell how much space you have and how much you have remaining. And then once you open it up, you'll see your drive and your team drives if you do use that. And you have the option now, instead of having to use the uh, kind of you know, system tray icon to right click on and kind of make changes. You can actually just right click on the file or folder itself. And then you'll have the option within the operating system to make available offline. So if I make this my drive folder available offline, it'll make every folder within it available offline as well. Uh, so you can also do this exact same thing with a specific file. So for instance, let's say this uh, switch file, if I need it offline, I go here and I say available offline, and then it'll have a little green check mark there once the application is downloaded. So I'll be able to access that application or that file or folder without an internet connection. Slightly different approach to the version that you would, than what you would have um, with Google Backup and Sync. Uh, one of the other uh, differences is that unlike uh, Google Backup and Sync, you don't have the option to add additional folders to back up to um, your, your Google Drive account. So you can't have a folder, let's say, on your desktop backing up to your um, Google Drive file stream. already so let's just close this out uh, so both apps tailored to two different uh, user groups both do function very well depending on what you need to use it for you can uh, you know decide that for yourself and 
that's essentially the kind of gist of the Google Drive replacement. Uh, thank you for watching. We hope to see you next time. Take care.